Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, card holics of all ages, welcome back to Big Al's Cards and thank you so much for watching. In today's video, we're going to be discussing one of the hottest new trends in the hobby, Prism Monopoly. And I know what you're thinking. What? So Panini, in a partnership with Hasbro, have created a new version of Monopoly that is revolving entirely around Prism Basketball. So to give you a rough idea, I have this Trayvon Walker uh, Prism Red, White, and Blue. It's got the same basic design as Prism does this year, but right along the bottom, you would see a giant Monopoly logo. And then there's also uh, various parallels that incorporate different aspects of Monopoly, such as the Go sign, the Little Monopoly Man, dollar signs, basically just created a bunch of new Prism parallels, right? And in the back, they have stats because it's part of the game. So it's not the same as um, actual Prism. It is more focused on the game aspect of it. But it is essentially, you know, you've got 90, I think it's 90 cards in the Prism Monopoly base set. Uh, there's a full board game with two packs. And there are, for lack of better terms, blasters. Because there's four packs and six cards per pack in those boxes. And... Target has them right now. I don't know if they're still on the website as of this morning when I'm recording this, but yesterday, uh, Sunday, I uh, was checking Twitter and I saw that people were ordering it. People were seeing it live in the stores. I actually even went to go check my Target just to see if they had any, um, and they didn't have any at the time. So people rushed out to get this because I think that they think it's going to be the hottest new trend in the hobby, right? So... I watched some openings. I saw some people open things on Twitter, and the cards look really good. So let me let me provide a bit of a disclaimer. I'm personally probably not going to buy any Prism Monopoly, maybe a single if I really like it, but it's it's not necessarily for me. That's not to say that you shouldn't go out and buy it if you're interested in it. I don't care what you do with your money. I'm just providing my opinion on the product. So I saw some of the cards open, and there were many people who pulled some really monster cards. Uh, Paolo Banquero, rookies, numbered to 99. Uh, LeBron, gold wave to 10. I mean, there were some really big cards pulled out of this. But there were also a lot of dud boxes, for lack of better terms. Basically, just four packs with all base cards. And that's probably bound to happen more likely than others. Because... The, the major issue that I see with the set, and I think you'll understand where I'm going with it, is that I think it's going to be printed to the moon. I, I don't want to say it's going to be printed more than regular Prism. I don't necessarily think that. But if you think about what the purpose of these cards are, then it makes sense as to why they would print as much as possible. It's very similar to when Pokemon print it started ramping up the printing presses and really putting as many cards out there as possible to try to combat these scalpers is because the purpose of pokemon is not to get them graded and sit in a box and sell them for a bunch of money it's a card game right the purpose of the pokemon trading card game is to play the game i mean you can collect the pokemon cards i have a couple um in my collection and there are certain ones that are from my childhood that i'd like to get and maybe get graded there's nothing wrong with that but I remember, you know, the purpose of it is to play the game. So when I see Pokemon scalpers, I get confused because I'm like, it's, it, you're just pretending you playing a game, dude. The purpose of Prism Monopoly is not to open blasters and get the cards graded. You can do that because they made these special parallels, but it's a game, right? So if it's a game and they want as many people playing the game as possible because it's a version of Monopoly, then you would imagine that they're going to print a lot of these cards. So if anybody's trying to get rich off of Prism Monopoly, I don't necessarily see it happening unless it's a numbered card, because they are limited. By nature of serial numbered cards, they are limited to whatever that serial number is. But silvers, to my knowledge, are not numbered. Base cards certainly aren't numbered. There's another parallel or two that are not numbered. How much of those are out there? So if you're going to go grade one of those unnumbered parallels or try to sell them, you're going to see a whole lot more of them enter the market. Versus, you know, if you had like a red, white, and blue prism, 
yes, that is worth more than a base card. But if you're expecting to get a lot of money for it, these aren't numbered. Panini could make more of these really at any time because they're not numbered and you'd have no idea. We could flood the market with red, white, and blues versus the gold to 10 or the gold or the go symbol or the white dollar sign sparkle one of one. Like those are very limited, right? So if you're buying these to chase those low numbered parallels, I understand it from that perspective because they are more limited. They are going to be by nature of greater worth or at least of greater resale value. But if you're buying it to try to, if you're buying a ton of these boxes to try to pull one of those cards, you've got to remember that there's a lot of them out there. So the pull rates on this, if I had to guess, probably aren't going to be as great as we hope, unless it's, you know, they do the first round. And there's always a conspiracy about this. There's a first round loaded box, and then they go, you know, the next wave isn't as loaded. I've seen that conspiracy floating on Twitter, and I don't necessarily believe that's true. But it certainly can kind of come across that way, right? Um, if they were to, you know, quote unquote, load these first wave of Prism Monopoly basketball boxes, then of course that's going to entice people to go out and buy more and improve the sales for both Hasbro and Panini. I think the game is a great idea. I mean, it's a really unique um, partnership for sure. You know, it's very much like Funko and Panini, where we have Prism Pop cards and Funkos. And now we get a board game with Panini. I mean, I love the collaboration. I love to see more things like this happen, where you have trading cards specifically related to something else. I mean, maybe we'll get like a tops and uh, some kind of cereal thing. I mean, I never used to get baseball cards in cereal boxes when I was a kid. I'd get little, little mini bobbleheads in uh, cereal boxes as a kid. Why not do more things like that, where you have a promotion with Tops or Panini and a cereal company or something that kids really enjoy. I mean, Pokemon and cereal happened and that was a, that was a mess, but it, you know, it, it does open the door for unique partnerships down the road, which I love because I think that's really going to help expand the hobby, create some unique cards. And I think that's really cool. But if there's people out there who are trying to get rich off of Prism Monopoly, you got to remember that it's going to be printed to the moon. The purpose of it is not to be a flippable card. And people are going to do it, but it's meant to be pl played alongside a board game. So if they want to get board games in people's hands, they got to have these little booster packs in people's hands. And if people want to up their Panini Prism Monopoly board game as a family, they're going to be buying these cards for that purpose. Not necessarily to, oh, I got a Paolo Bancaro base Monopoly rookie. I'm going to grade it and sell it for $200, right? That's not the main purpose of the game. The main purpose of the game is a game. Again, this is not me knocking the product. I think it's a really unique idea. I love it. I'm personally not going to buy it because A, Monopoly ruins households. And B, I don't, I mean, it's just not something that, that appeals to me personally. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with people going out and buying a bunch of this to try to rip it. Have fun, right? That's the purpose of the product. But remember that it's a game. If you're trying to get rich off of it, eh, it's going to be a little bit tough, right? Unless you're selling it sealed, in which case, then I see that's a smart play. Sealed wax, always a smarter play than ripping 90% of the time. So should you go out and buy Prism Monopoly? I mean, if you can find it and you're interested in trying it, I have no, like, do it. It's your money. I don't care. You know, it, just because I'm not spending my money on it doesn't mean you shouldn't spend your money on it. I literally am not trying to dictate what you guys do. I'm sharing my opinion on what I think about the product. And if you want to make an informed decision using my opinion, you're welcome to do so. This is not investment advice. This is not telling you what you should or should not go buy. I'm just giving you my thought on the product. If you want to go buy Prism Monopoly, like do it. Have, have a good time ripping it. See if you like it. If I see enough people ripping it, maybe I'll try a box. I don't necessarily think I'm going to, but if I see a lot of people do it, yeah, maybe I'll try one. I'll record it. We'll find out, right? So let me know what you guys think about Prism Monopoly in the comments. I'd love to really hear what you think about it, if you've ripped it. Um, if you think I should go do it, like, hey, let me know. I'll, maybe I'll try it if I can find it. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Please leave a like, subscribe, stay tuned for more videos, and until next time, bye-bye.